My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. All right, it is time to once again try and kill that transient within five turns in order to get the fade achievement. Now, there was a little bit of conversation about why I'm using Ascension rather than non-Ascension whilst I do this. And my uh, the contention being that if elites are spawning more often, they're spawning in spaces that could have otherwise been normal enemy locations that could have been the transient. So there's two different ways to look at this. I have the elite spawning more often so that I can fight the elite, so that I can get the relics that I will uh, will allow the uh, the kind of build to ball out of control to the point that I can kill a transient in five turns, right? If I don't have those relics, maybe I don't end up with a deck strong enough to kill a transient in five turns and it all wasn't worth it. The inverse is if the transient doesn't spawn because I have the ascension one on and it was replaced by an elite, then it doesn't matter how powerful my build is because I can't kill the transient in five turns anyway. I think ultimately these two kind of average out on the ironclad where things like uh, the bag of marbles or the vajra or giria or any of those kinds of things are super huge advantages to the win strategy that you would be doing in that fight specifically strength stacking limit breaking etc I think for the Silent, it's a little bit closer because the Silent has... What would the Silent have that's be, like, super important? Sneko Skull, the Bag of Preparation. Like, those are the only two relics that super quickly come to mind as, as relics that would be ridiculously good for the Silent-specific strategy of using Poison and Catalyst. So I think think for the ironclad i'll do it with ascension one for the silent i'll do it on no ascension mode whatsoever another try sure choose a rare card to obtain for a poison build isn't that good there's one i believe poison related uh poison related rare card in the silent set and it is corpse explosion and we wouldn't be using it all right, let's have a look at our map. Yeah, unfortunately, there's three fights before every single different possible elite space. So we're not going with enemies in the next three combats have one HP. Remove a card from my deck. I mean, the silence starts with two extra cards and removing those cards is kind of essential if you want to get the consistency of drawing your poisons before your catalysts or your catalyst with your burst or your burst with your poisons, etc., etc., etc. Um... And also, replacing my boss relic will give us less potential to get our poisons super early on with the Ring of the Snake. So, I'll be removing a card here. I'll be removing initially a strike. Now, this is going to make me less potent against elites. So, I'm very likely here to start just not fighting elites here on the first floor. Um, because I, I need to pick up a poison card before I can really do it. Okay, really, that's, like, that could have been a lot better. Two more strikes in that hand in particular would have done nicely. Alright, gosh, unprotected and not attacking, and I couldn't have the damage to kill him. Alright, two strikes kills, yes. Show me poison. Mm -mm. So, here's, here's a problem. How many cards outside of our core strategy should I take to try and get me to where I need to get? Right? All Out Attack is actually quite a good card. It's an AoE card. You need a little bit of AoE in the Silent Deck, especially on Floor 2. Uh, there's not that much AoE in Poison Decks. Noxious Fumes does it, but Noxious Fumes is a very slow growth poison. So it wouldn't be particularly helpful in the transient fight. I'm more looking for like double tap deadly poison, double tap catalyst, double tap bouncing flask, etc. I think this is going to have to be our AoE. 
Sneko Skull is there. That's really, 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 really bad. That's so bad. Sneko Skull is huge for this run, and the fact that I've seen it and can't purchase it is just sad. Uh, well-laid plans is actually really good as well for holding catalyst until the right time and holding your burst until the right time. It allows you to use your combo pieces much more efficiently. Hey. Okay. Hold on to that one. Thank you. Weaken plus six block. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, or I could just kill that. That seems like a great idea either. All right, there's our bouncing flask. Unfortunately, Bouncing Flask is so important with the Sneko Skull because Bouncing Flask applies poison on the upgraded version four different times. So each of those benefits from the Sneko Skull. So you get four extra poison out of it, which is just goddamn insane. Um, I probably can't take the Curse of Regret, so max HP though. More than happy to bounce that flask. Hmm. Should just be strike, strike, all out attack, hold a defend. Easy. And no damage on me. I'm not even going to save any of those cards. We've got the kill next turn. Because I knew the bottom card in the deck was a strike. Cool. Gambler's Brew, Catalyst, thank you. I'm wondering if now I start to take on elites because I've got a catalyst and I got a bouncing flask. Those are our elite killers, effectively. This is an AOE fight that's going to be a little annoying for me, but at the same rate, we do have an all-out attack to help us with it. Bouncing flask is probably not really going to be utilized in this fight. Oh, uh, I guess I don't really have that much to do anyway. Okay. I'll do it before I neutralize. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'll do it before I neutralize so that I can weaken an enemy. Yeah, we're going to take some damage here. That's okay, though. Can you single defend because I'm going to be double striking the back line to set them up for a strike kill next. We have one strike left in our deck. Five draws out of 12, so... We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, didn't get the strike, but as long as I am willing to put a daze back into my deck, I can fully defend here. Mm -hmm. See, the frontliner is going to die in two turns anyway, so they die before they commit their next attack. Because they had five poison. Or rather, they had three poison, but two turns left and five HP. So, easy. Well, at least I know my next fight is not going to be the Sentinels. Ooh, War Paint upon pick up. Upgrade two random skills. That could be amazing for us, depending on how this goes. Yep, hit a Catalyst. Potion Belt upon pick up. Gain two potion slots. That's actually really good as well. If I can hold a bunch of poisons, I can effectively just uh, kind of leave them in wait. As much as I want to hold the Catalyst, the Survivor is probably more important right now. But it, it, it will mean that I can leave my more important... Hang on. I've got to take a second here to figure out what I'm doing. There you go. Let's try that one again. It means that I can hold all of the Poison Potions and then get into a fight and use those to kind of kickstart the burst or whatever I'm doing. Excellent. Can we not have hands that do nothing, please? Moida. Dex potion, not bad, not bad. Acrobatics is not bad. I'll take a single copy. Gosh, I hope I get an energy relic. Oh, wow. What an opening hand. Especially because this enemy gets more potent if I happen to leave them 
to this turn, they've enraged, and then I start hitting them with skills. That's not even relevant here. Hell yes. That was a great kill for us. Uh, burn, uh, sorry, blue candle. Curse card's going to be played. Playing a curse will make you lose one HP as well as exhaust the card. I'm not going to take any of those. I've already got an all-out attack. Don't need a second. Anchor, start each combat with 10 block. All right, we're getting, we're getting the defensive elements of this so that we can defend while we set up for our build. I'll upgrade the all-out attack because, again, AoE fights are the bane of our life. Next floor. Okay. I'm actually going to take the strike here because it guarantees the lethal next turn. Easy. Alchemize presents an interesting problem. I think I take it so that I can curate a bunch of poison potions. And I also think I upgrade it so that I can make sure that I play it every single fight. I need an energy relic after this fight, basically. It's kind of non-negosh, that one. So from now on, I'm basically just defending myself. Eh. I was pretty much only using acrobatics there to try and get to my well-laid plans. Mm, it's all worked out. All right. So, 40 this turn. Alternatively, I can sap up another turn by allowing you to hit my armor, and then you transform this turn. I'll acrobatics here. Yeah. Ooh, can even do that. I'll acrobatics here so that I can get the defend, the upgraded one, that is, in my hand. Uh, I can kill this turn, actually. It's strike, strike, all out attack. I didn't need to do that. I could have perfected the fight if I didn't attack. But again, we're not here to perfect the fights, right? Uh, speed potion, gain five decks. Burst, extremely, yes. Uh, we can't take Sozu, and we do need the extra energy, so I kind of have to take the Cursed Key. We've also got the blue candle to burn the curses out of our deck, so not that bad. We can probably still pick up relics. But, yeah, it, it has to be the Cursed Key. There's no two ways about that one, unfortunately. Okay. We've... Off with one elite. Wow. All of the best paths have one elite here. I'm actually wondering if maybe I go on a one elite path. Yeah, you know what? I will. There's more chances in an event as well. There's an alchemize. We're definitely keeping the poison potions, but I I feel like I probably should have waited and used a burst there. I'm going to gambler's brew all of this. Except for that, right? So that I can get to my bouncing flask. Because this leaves me with a catalyst in hand, which I'm just going to hold, that I can use to kill next turn. The primary reason to have done it like that is because I don't need all of these potions, right? I'm going to get a bunch of potions quite easily, so I don't need to be so precious about my usage of them. I'm actually considering doing the upgrade here. As much as a removal is excellent, an upgrade would allow me to better defend myself. And defense, especially considering I have no defensive cards, uh, is going to be at a premium on this floor. So we'll upgrade them all. Okay. I'll use the attack potion. Bouncing flask. Ah, I should have neutralized first. That's my bad. Would have had more poison. I actually don't think it's even going to make a difference. I think we get the kill either way. Yeah. Stand the turns. Skill potion. Eh, not bad. Not great. Not bad. 
this one's not great either. All right. Gives a skill potion. Yeah, backflips. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, there's the bouncing blast with the catalyst in hand. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Let's alchemize first. Yeah. So you're dead in two turns. Just need to defend myself against the front liner. Sure. We're going to have some difficulty here, unfortunately. Not yet, but soon. Because that frontliner is going to start getting real mad at me. Here we go. Uh... The madness begins. I'm going to hold the burst so that I can burst Bouncing Flask. So I'm basically accepting seven damage here in order to really give myself the opportunity to kill. I have another option of using the intangibility this turn to save seven HP, but we have one elite on this path and we are going to have a position where the intangibility is worth more than seven HP to us. Okay. Upgraded deadly poison. Hell yes. Sure. Ah, Barsha. Mm, it's not great, not bad. <clears> okay. <throat> all right, all right, all right. This is difficult. This is difficult. You have to give me a moment here. I kind of want to use the acrobatics for the draw. is the thing. Yeah, I will. Well, we're definitely weakening the back line. I want to burst Bouncing Flask now. Get as much poison as I uh, can out. Hopefully it doesn't just over poison all the frontliners. Never mind. They'll die in two turns. It's, that's a fine amount of poison to have done. So we save three plus 12. We say 15 with this ghost in the jar. Easy. This guy can't attack two turns in a row, so he'll attack this turn. Can't attack this turn, but these two can't do anything because they're about to die. So it's actually quite handy there. I should basically always be keeping a card, right? Oh, I'm tempted to acrobatics here. Cool, we did get a burst. I was... I should always be keeping a card, basically, so I don't shuffle them back into my deck where I just immediately draw them back out. It didn't matter in those final two turns because the fight was already over. The enemies just didn't know it yet. Oddly smooth stone. Started combat with plus one decks. Not bad. Pretty damn good for us, in fact. We need to upgrade that burst. As well as catalyst... Uh, not catalyst, uh, the well laid plans after this so that we can hold our combo pieces better. Okay. Got to get one of them down basically as quickly as I can. Uh, I'm actually going to use the speed potion here. Yeah, could have gone a lot worse. Could have gone a hell of a lot worse, in fact. All right, we'll burst acrobatics, but hmm, I don't feel great about it. All right, we'll have that defend burst, and then we'll all out there. Sure. So you're dead next turn. Bouncing Flask is still in my deck, but I'm not going to want to keep the burst for the Bouncing Flask because we've got an enemy that's still alive on the field. So it could take a lot of the Bouncing Flask charges without, you know, providing any benefit to me. Burst, Bouncing Flask, and Deadly Poison. Hell yeah. Stack that poison. Specimen is good for the kind of consistency of this run, but it won't actually help us against the Transient. Fire potions, probably not that important. Backflip? Yeah, maybe. 
Yeah, single copy of an upgraded black, uh, backflip. I'll take it. Sure. Toxic Egg, whenever you add a skill card to your deck, it's upgraded. That's actually really good for us because all of our poison cards, or all of the poison cards I'm particularly interested in are going to be uh, powers. Powers, sorry, uh, skills. Well, the first thing we should do is just get that doubt out of there. Hmm. Trying to think if any of these are actually going to be particularly handy for us. Like, when you're doing a poison build, a lot of the time your enemies die outside of your turns, so you won't get the en uh, the benefit of the energy because your energy is reasserted at the start of your turn. So if your enemy die uh, if the enemy dies in their turn, you gain an energy, you draw a card, and then your turn comes around and you go back to your sort like your energy is recalculated based on all of your forms of generating energy which will disclude the previous gain of energy from the death of an enemy while you had Gremlin Horn. So, like, if you have, you know, an energy relic, so you get four energy every single turn, three by base, one from the energy relic. Your enemy dies, you get an energy in their turn, then your turn rolls around, and you get your four energy, but it is not added to the amount of energy that you currently have unless you have ice cream allowing you to carry over leftover energy. Right, it's effectively left over from the previous turn. You do get an extra card though. So it's not that bad. It's just not that good either. Uh, we're doing a defensive build, so bronze scales is not that bad. It's just not that good either. You can see the trend here. Uh, I think we should probably take foot, uh, footwork at the very least. I'm gonna take the bronze scales. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave myself open to later shops having better items. So 21 is exactly the amount of energy, <laughs> energy, the, exactly the amount of damage our enemy is going to do. So good defense there. Perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. Bye. It is worth noting. Ooh, do I take a calculated gamble in this deck? Yes. Uh, but it is worth noting that we need an extra catalyst because... Unless we get a really good start, we're not going to be... Hang on. Let me just quickly figure out this. Unless we get a ridiculously good start, we're not actually going to have enough damage to kill the enemy we are looking to kill. So which of these do I care about the least? Probably these two essences at the moment, actually. Because I want to burst the alchemist. Yeah. Didn't really get what I was looking for there, either. That's okay, though. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you might just find you get what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll do. I mean, eight-plated armor is ridiculous, but I'm looking to stack as many poison potions as I can possibly get. That's ultimately our goal. It's basically impossible to damage me. Right. Any reasonable draw will keep us around. Okay. Nope. Don't need a second. Yeah. Tiny chest, gain 30 gold. You're 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. Sure. Do need to upgrade that well-laid plans. All right. Let's go, bossman. Get that doubt out of the deck. <sighs> well, could have gone better. Yeah. Not extremely keen. Not extremely keen on how this has been going so far. Maybe I should have held Deadly Poison rather than used it. Let me use those two so that I can burst Alchemize. And we'll burst Backflip. Don't have a burst in hand, but I can hold the Catalyst. That's handy. Is it 
Deadly Poison for you as well. We're basically just going to be completely ignoring these Torch Heads. Okay. Hopefully some of this hits the back line. So that the Catalyst doesn't feel like garbage. Oh, God. Whatever. It still kills in a turn. Mm -hmm. What would I pick up out of the rack cards? Like, Adrenaline? Yes. Another Burst? Possibly? Not so sure about anything else. Definitely not any of those. Our fight goes too long to really use the Wraith form. The Thousand Cuts, we don't play that many cards. Phantasmal Killer, we don't use attack cards, so... Uh, we do need to play six cards a turn a lot of the time, right? Consider the fact that when you play Burst and then you play two skills after it, you are playing five cards. Burst, copy one, copy two of card one, copy one, copy two of card two. So Velvet Choker is just way too restrictive. I also think in general Velvet Choker is way too restrictive, but that's a conversation for a different day. Um, Pandora's Box, no. Most of our defense is provided by the defense, so... It's got to be Coffee Dripper if I want the extra energy, and I do want the extra energy. We're also playing what is primarily a defensive deck, despite the fact that we don't really have defensive cards, so... Alright. On this floor, I basically want to go for as many combats as possible, and as few elites as possible. So this path has one, two, three, four, five... Like, six. Maximum. Okay. This one has one... Uh, sorry. And one at the start, so seven. One, two, three, four... Because I would go to the shop because I have so much money. Five, six, seven... This is also just a nicer path. Okay. I'm going to apply weakness here because we will be in this fight for a while. Get to our import. Good lord. Get to our important cards. Thank you. Yikes. And our uh, well, uh, well laid plans the is the final card in our deck. Yay. Damn it. I dual selected that card. That's my bad. Burst the deadly poison and the defend. <sighs> Speed potion beats the fear potion, which does nothing in our deck. Okay. Yeah, this block potion will defend me for eight. That's worth. Artifacting's not bad to pick up as well, either. Hopefully this doesn't discard burst. Thank you. Okay. I can see myself having to use the ghost in the jar in just a moment. One dead. Two dead. Three dead. Hell yeah. Those bounces worked quite well. Did their job. Noxious Fumes doesn't go in this. It's a poison build, and Noxious Fumes almost always goes in every poison build. But this this needs to be a spike poison build. It needs to happen really quickly. Noxious Fumes is not going to apply that much poison in the boss fight, unfortunately. Uh, Dodge and Roll is a great defensive card, and considering how many times we get Speed Potions, and we have Speed Potions as well as Ancient Artifact, it's worth noting. If I use two Speed Potions in the Ancient Artifact in the same turn, I will get ten decks. But I can't really jeopardize the consistency of my draw. Not right now, at least. I'm going to acrobatics looking for... There you go. 
Burst Fountain Plus Catalyst. Only we had Sneko Skull though. I'm still looking for a second Catalyst if I can get it. It's one of the reasons we're going to this shop. Not all of the reasons, but one of the reasons. Secret Technique is really good because it's just an extra draw for a card I might need. So I'll take Secret Technique. I wish I could have taken Secret Technique and Thread and Needle, but I can't. I can, however, take a membership card and then a card removal. Oh, obviously not a strike. Uh, doubt. No. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Definitely need to use the Poison Potion. We need to secret technique, right? We secret... So, we if we secret technique looking for the Bouncing Flask, then we burst Deadly Poison and Bouncing Flask. Bouncing Flask is 12, applied twice, 24 on top of 6, so it's 30. And then the Deadly Poison makes that 54. The thing is, then I need to wait so long until I get burst with Catalyst, right? I do have card draw in my deck, but can I guarantee burst with Catalyst after that? Possibly, possibly not. So if, what if I took Catalyst with this? How about we resolve the Alchemize first? Because we know we're not bursting Alchemize. That's not what we wanted. We have to go with this one, unfortunately. Our only way is to build as much poison as we can. Not really what I wanted. Okay. I'll retain two cards here just to take them out of the draw circulation. Mm-hmm. Burst Catalyst, right? 150, yeah, it's Burst Catalyst. I'm gonna calculate a gamble twice. I'm basically just looking to try and get different cards in hand so that I can hold them. Yep, you're dead. We did it. I'm not actually like, as proud of the fact that we did it as I am of the fact that I prescribed from the start of this run exactly how we were going to do it and then did it. Achievement gotten. It's, uh, it's not popping up though. Defeat the transient before it fades away. We just did that. Game? Game? It's still locked. I got the... I did it. Is, wait, I'm going to check. If 0% of the community have this, then it's just bugged. Yeah, 0% of the community have the transient achievement. Come on. Wow, only 0.5 of the community have the common sense achievement. Anyway, uh, that's really unfortunate. We did it, though. I'm a little mad about that, TBH. All right, sure. I'll take an Orichalcum. I'm fine with putting all of these curses into my deck because we have so much draw power and now we don't need, really need to care that much about our combo power, right? Um, we have so much draw power that we can just draw into them and then get rid of them. I've already done the upgrade all cards so that I can get the Mind of the Bloom, but I don't know if I did that in the main branch or in the beta branch. I'll do this one regardless, though. Let's secret technique a... Bouncing Flask. Use that before I calculate it. There's actually nothing I can get from that Alchemize that I want more than anything else I have. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we'll double up on that as well, I guess. Drop the alchemy because I'm not using it. First, the deadly poison. Secret technique that out and that out. Then calculate a gamble. Try and get myself an entirely new hand. All right. Could have gone a lot worse. I mean, backline splitting this turn anyway. So we should try and make sure that it splits to have as low of an HP value as is humanly possible for us to give it. Really? A little bit suspect, I think. Screw that one in particular. Let's get burst and bouncing flask because then we can burst bouncing flask daily poison definitely goes on the front line are you actually that was insane it took almost all of them it took seven charges out of eight i'm not even mad that's amazing uh, incense burner. This is a new relic, by the way. I've just not really taken it that often because it's kind of underwhelming. Uh, every five turns, gain an intangible. Twelve cards, sure. I'm specifically choosing to not take anything here. If you're wondering why I'm immediately failing these. Those madnesses get immediately upgraded when they're put into my deck, so sure. Take another neutralize. Spin that wheel, friend. Considering our final fight is a boss fight, I could actually consider not removing either of these because I can remove these in play, right? It's easy to get them out of my deck. Whereas these strikes aren't really good for us. And they stay in our deck. All right, there we go. Fully upgraded deck. But the real thing is speed potion, speed potion, ancient potion. Actually, quickly, we should burst the alchemize. Eh. And throw that on you. Pretty ridiculous amount of defense for us to have. Also start regenning. Yeah, look at that. 14 block. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. So yeah, we gained 22 block with a single card. It's insane. Um, actually, defend myself there. All right. Mm. I do need the card draw. Mm -hmm. so secret technique of madness. And that one. My goal ultimately is to get the all out attack hit with the madness. Nice. Sorry, the deadly poison. I actually did mean the deadly poison. Just my bad for mucking that one up. All right, in one turn's time, that incense burner is going to be particularly handy. Can't wait. Unfortunately, I can't calculate a gamble with this hand. Just because I can't afford to put a bunch of dazed back into my deck. It would just deny so many draws in the future. Yay, we defended this turn. I am now... Backliner is actually going to be much easier for us in the long run. Is that true? That's not true. Okay, we'll kill the backliner right now. I 
had to quickly check that by the old brain factory and decide whether or not I was full of garbage. And it turns out, yes, yeah, I am. <laughs> oh. okay. Save those two. Secret technique is real good for fishing the cars that we need. Speaking of fishing the cars we need, there's a burst. That said, I'm not going to be using it this turn because I want to burst with all of my poison. Since I'm not dealing, you know, direct damage, it's extremely important that I wait until I have all of my poison before I start using the bursts. It's our only source of damage and I no longer have a catalyst to apply it extra. So we're out on our own here. Excellent. Flip. Strikes so that I can free up my hand and then burst it all. Yeah. Enemy's dead. I just now end my turns. <sighs> and we even get intangibility this turn. Nice. All right. 825. That's garbage. That's nothing. Probably because we dodged most elites. That makes a lot of sense. Boss has slain three. But I, I slew a boss with the, the event. Oh, did that one not count? Because that's been a weird score inflating kind of thing. Like, it's ridiculous how different your score is whether or not you get that Mind of the Bloom event. Let's actually check the patch notes. Uh, bug fix. No, no, no. It's not re referenced in any of those. Nor there. Nor there. Okay, I guess. I. I. Hmm. If it should be anywhere, it should be here, right? No, 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 no. All right. Well, never mind. It's uh, it's apparently not even really around. Hang on. Eh. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what's at the bottom here. Never mind. That's not going to work. All right. Let's have one quick look at our character stats. Is yeah, it's still locked. I killed it. I did do that, though. Well, we'll see. We'll see whether or not that's awarded retrospectively. That's that's something that has happened. Retroactively, rather, not retrospectively. Um, but that's something that has happened for previous achievements. Like, I immediately earned... Which was it, again? Oh, focused. Yeah, I, I earned that retrospectively for a consume run that I'd done like a couple days before Focused was added as a achievement. For the moment though, my name's been Rhapsody, the name of the game's been Slay the Spy, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.